Right. Mm, Kenya. Rain, 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 rain. The new car. The new and improved car. Still looks good in the rain. I suspect in terms of video time this one might actually be quicker than uh, the last. Probably not in terms of in-game time though.
Uh, let's watch some TF2 while I play. <laughs> Fuck it. Please be muted. Please be muted. I just saw the... There's a thing I've noticed on Twitch. Double loading screen. You get a loading and then it stutters, jumps. You get two loading uh, wheels at the same time. And that means you've got an advert. didn't really want to have to hear an advert that I wasn't going to be able to skip. But fortunately the stream was muted. We've got the uh, four, friend, four fence, the Frenchies versus Skedder. In Prem. Controller still connected. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Were you, surely you were here the other day, you're the only person who has been here. <laughs> the, um, how close you have to make names for world records to sound good. Because that's one hell of a, a title and I'm slightly worried because I'm not going to be an all stages, all group streamer in hopefully about two hours. Like fuck it, two hours, what the fuck am I on about? It's an hour to the end of this. In about three or four hours. <laughs> Before I go to bed tonight, because I am not going to bed. Because um, there's nowhere to put my arms back from holiday tomorrow, so I can't pull stupid things because she'll be like, eh, what are you doing? Fucking. Yeah. You go to bed at one in the morning, man. I'll be gone forever. There'll be nothing more for me to do in this game because I'm never going to get a world record, so it's the point. <laughs> I need to stop fucking around though because I've. Uh, I could have probably done Dry Kenya if I didn't make Mackie's. Uh, done Dry Kenya earlier if I didn't make Mackie's thing. That was kind of the plan, was to do three. Three out of six. So I did two. 
Then this time, and then I fucked around while I was making, while I was playing Dry Kenya. Fucked around and made one. So I've got a livery there. So yeah, that's the new new livery. Can you suck these nuts? I got a banger landing earlier, full throttle, off the jump, kept it pinned, full throttle fifth gear, kept it pinned, landed, still full throttle, no bounce, literally just hit the ground and just went poof. Of course the engineers did a good one on the suspension this morning. Whoo! Like landing into pillows, at least from this third person perspective. I assume that both the driver and the co-driver went, jump, oh fuck, poof, and experienced about 10 Gs for a second or so, but um, you know. It was a ballsy jump, and I can't remember which one it was. Uh, but it was in Kenya. I can't remember which one it was, but I was basically like full throttle. I'd been going full throttle for long enough that I thought, fuck it. I would rather send this and hope that it's straight on the other side than lose this full throttle before I take off from the jump. I'd rather have that extra half second of full throttle all the way. Wait, was it here? It might be here. I'm sending it if it... No, no, that's a turn. It's not here. <laughs> not here. Oh, no. Go and find... After this stream, preferably. Um, Pink Bike does it and Vital do it. Mountain Bike World Cup going through rock gardens. The suspension torture they do. There's also pink bikes uh, hooked to flat, which is quite fun, but that's different because they intentionally set the suspension up too soft for the weight of the rider that's on top of them. And then just, you know, fucking jump it off of a BMX ramp or something like that straight onto the floor. But it's always got like half the PSI that it actually should do in it, just enough to not actually do too much damage and have it completely clap out but basically just enough to hold you up while you stood on it. You could prob I reckon you could probably bottom those out by just like jumping on, you know, not, not even taking the wheels off the floor, you know, just you jumping up and down on the pedals. Because they are low pressure. But suspension setup is so impressive because you you have got to make it work for everything. Update on the TF2. Four fence has paused. Possible surrender coming from the French. Yo ya 
Although, actually, I think their meds crashed. <laughs> I, too, would continue to pause if my med had crashed. Especially since that would probably be me. Coils are good if you basically only ride the same stuff. They're a pain in the ass if you travel, unless you've actually got the time to like set them up. But if you can get the right weight of spring for what you're actually riding day in, day out, then coils are mint. I know quite a few riders that, um, not personally, but professional riders, over COVID, while they were just stuck at home, only had the one set of trails, trying out coil and decided to move over to it because they realised that if you could set it up just right, you could run it. But in Enduro, it's quite interesting, there's um, Jack Moyer, I'm not sure if he did it this year, but uh, two years ago, he was, um, he was swapping between coil on some tracks and air shock on others because he would literally, it, it was a coil, it was a coil if he could get away with it, but if the track changed too much between like morning and afternoon, once he got to a place where he could get a shock pump off of someone, wasn't going to carry a shock pump around of course, but you know. Air is definitely better with jumps because you can just pump it up to a bazillion. No one's going to let you... You can't purchase a shock pump. Uh, an air, air... Yeah, a coil. A coil that will do what you want. And if you're going to do that and you're going to actually set it up for jumps, and purely for jumps, well you might as well get a dirt jumper with no suspension on the back and an air fork out front yeah that's that's what I mean you're gonna be shit for everything else and cuz coils don't have lockouts I don't think or some I don't know uh, maybe they do the coils have lockouts I feel like yeah yeah they should do because the mechanism is in the rebound cell rather than in the it's not like air, whatever. Yeah, do you still have a lockout? Because I was told when I started, when I got my foot, when I got an air fork a couple of years ago, a guy at the park, who's ridden a ton, used to be a trail guide in New Zealand, he told me if you're gonna do dirt jumping, you're gonna like hit it hard and you know you're not going to go to the trails that day, like you are just coming straight to the BMX track to rip and you know you're not going to be riding trails, don't use the lockout on your suspension. Pump your suspension up to 250 PSI. Because it just puts less stress on the parts to have the, uh, have the pressure just be consistent. And then when it's... When it hits, when it takes that impact, it's not a single part taking the impact. It's the air gets more compressed, and yeah, it now goes from 200 psi to maybe even 250 psi. But that's spread out over the whole fork. Yeah, locking it up before we're going to ride trails is a bit daft. I could get away with it on most of the trails. Like, 
it's basically are you going to some actual decent trails or you're going to have an actual session in the trails because I can totally ride no suspension in the trails that we have. I mean, when I first rode the trails that we've got around me, there is no elevation gain. Like, honestly, this hill we've just gone up, probably more elevation gain. I would say there's the elevation gain of two Ford Fiestas. All focuses, because this is a focus, not a Fiesta. I forgot that. Like, there's fuck all elevation gain. It is literally... The park, the park is a set... The country park near me is a set of lakes. The lakes aren't natural lakes. The park used to be a gravel pit that they put a big old tarpaulin in and filled with water. So any of the raises are just the shit that they dumped off of it years ago. They used to be a lot taller. <laughs> Would you believe it? They've sunk over the years. Um, oh, it's all settled now. It should should be permanently settled. But yeah, we don't have much, and the first time I rode them was on a cyclocross bike, so drop bar, skinny tyres, 32 mil it would have been, which is probably the tyres I've got on right now on my bike. So like, maximum I would have had is 35 mil wide tyres. Just ripping it up in the woods. It's probably not. Those trails are super difficult to ride because we're trying to make the most of every single meter of descent. The entire thing has to be off camber because it's actually really steep if you just beeline it straight down. It's really quite steep. So it's all extremely off camber because we're trying to gently go down. And if we do go down, then you're probably gonna do more than a 180 so you come back up a little bit and then face down again and like go through S bends and chicanes through the trees. None of it's really steep particularly except for a couple of the bits where you do just like beeline for a second and then have to do a 180 which is always fun. But it's like... It's super technical it's almost trials, but the fact is you can get back up to the top in 30 seconds if you pedal hard. 45 if you don't. Which means that you can do so many laps, because they're less than a minute long runs. So you have to make it hard. The first time you go through it, it's hard, yeah. But then you go through it 20 times, and you're like, oh, that's why it's hard. Because you have to do it again and again and again. It doesn't have to be readable on the first time through. You can miss certain bits because you're going to do it again and again and again and again because there's nothing else around. It's great fun. Big Yoon.
Oh, this was the bit that I came super fast through, I think. And then just sent it off the top of the hill. No, it wasn't. Never mind. I vaguely remember a bridge. Maybe it's the way going the other way. I've probably already missed it. And I just fucked up a corner right before it. And went slow over it. Tricky old country is Kenya. No, don't go off, don't go off, don't go off, don't go off. Oh yeah, I had a horrible thought uh, earlier. The leaderboards program. Can we detect whether somebody's running in the IDLE? Because if we can detect if someone's running in the IDLE, we could in theory be extremely brutal and uh, detect if someone's running in the IDLE if then you put just a blank input. The Python IDLE is what people would use on Win. Oh no, the Python the IDLE is on Linux. Oh no, but if you're running in the IDLE, then you still want to run Linux or Windows, of course. So instead of just detecting if on Windows, because some people aren't going to open, even on like Mac, some people are going to open the IDLE. Because they're going to think, oh, I've got to install that program, because they don't realise they've got it installed already. Or we do what I said about dumping it to TK into interface. That's the other option. Oh yeah, you can detect the operating system. But there's no if you're on you can be on Windows and still um still be using Python from a console, either MingW or uh, Linux subsystem for Windows. Jesus fuck, they can't figure out the script. True. Wait, can't we force it to bring up a console when you open the script? Maybe not the... oh no, not the script. Maybe? I don't know. And then we'd have to put in a system wait call as well. I quite like the fact that you don't actually have to import anything at the minute. <laughs> Get the script on the AUR. I did think we could also rewrite it in Java. Which is something that A, 
guaranteed to be installed on the user's system and B No, it doesn't open the terminal. It's got its own it's got its own terminal sort of thing. But it's not a terminal and it closes immediately after the script's finished executing. Yeah, so we either just drop an input open close at the end, which is shit if you're on Linux and you've got to press the button because it hasn't opened up a new window. So you've got to uh, press enter. You actually want to get an input of single character so that it'll just close immediately. So, if you press any button. Um, yeah, you either do that, yeah, special Windows version. Well, that's what I was saying, if on Windows, but it wouldn't really work, because you can use the IDLE on Linux, because I did for years, like, many years. When did I stop using it? Honestly, I probably stopped using the IDLE after I stopped being like massively interested in programming because pretty I've always had this weird thing where I've ended I've I've never got along with just using a text editor for proper things. The first thing probably the first time I've used an actual just generic text editor to do code that isn't HTML was that Python script. Because honestly, I have always used proper IDEs for whatever it is, like, you know, code blocks if it's C++, Eclipse if it's Java, whatever the thing is, I've used it. Mono develop C Sharp. Which I think just comes from the way that I was always taught. Kind of all the tutorials that I followed as when I was learning programming, they were always do it in the thing that you know done in the thing that you've got. Python, you've got the IDLE on the Raspberry Pi. That's how I learned it on the Raspberry Pi. So I never felt the need to leave it because honestly, solid fucking text editor. There'll be better features in generic text editors, and it's got nothing Python specific other than syntax. Yeah, VS Code's the standard and I hate that. I hate the fact that there's not really a great... What did I used to use on Linux? I used to use something on Linux that was kind of like VS Code. But it wasn't, it wasn't Microsoft open source. Because that sounds like a terrible way to make yourself hate yourself. I used it on Mac as well, I'm sure I had the same thing installed on Mac for when I was doing anything that required not uh, Xcode and Swift, because you know anything Apple is going to be Swift. I used Atom for a short while, but that's Microsoft now. Fuck, what's the bastard one that I used to use? I'm literally just going to Google Notepad++ alternative because I guarantee you it was a Notepad++ alternative. I 100% guarantee you that I got Linux, searched for a Notepad++ alternative and installed it. And I guarantee you that I didn't realise that basically every DE on Linux, default text editor, is a Notepad++ replacement that has, you know, a good find option and code formatting and all of that sort of thing and automatic tabbing and all that bollocks what did I fucking used to use 
I can't type. Sublime rings a no, because that's paid, isn't it? <laughs> Sublime's paid. <laughs> I'm fucking paying for shit. Um, why did I use Atom at the time? Oh yeah, Genie. That's the fucker, Genie. I used to use Genie. Yes, I used. I remember why I used to use Atom as well. It was installed on my um, work machine when I went to work for the first time. Because the guy that was the boss used it. And he just set up everything as the default. It, as soon as I started he said, I've installed everything that I use. You install whatever programs you use for text editor and stuff. Um, if it doesn't exist on Mac, because he knew I was coming from Windows. If it doesn't exist on Mac, then I'd recommend you just use whatever I've done. Genie's the default ID on the Pi. That's true. That's probably why I used it. Was it the one that I used for the longest time, though? I need to check. Is I definitely used Genie, but whether I... How long I ended up using it for after I was... Not mainly devving on the Pi is a different thing. Yeah, I remember Genie. I think it was probably Genie. You set up good shit on that. Everything's about the Raspberry Pi on Genie. Oh, I'll tell you what I could do. Um, if I go to my GitLab. How do I log in? <laughs> Fucking hate this shit. Yes, remember me this time, you fucker. Uh, Gmail. What I'm going to try and do is go back to the last thing that I made and either look in the git ignore or the... Um... No, no. What did I edit that in? No, they made the git ignore, so it must have already been in there, which is a problem. <laughs> Let's have a look through the git ignore. For the IDEs. No, I can't think of it. Thony. I've heard of it, I don't think I used it. Oh yeah, that's Python specific though. Yeah, no, this, this wasn't Python specific. Yeah, I think I probably looked at Thony and went, no. <laughs> I think it was probably Genie, to be honest. Let's look up Notepad++ Linux alternatives. It's FOSS, seven of them. Cracking. Wait, Notepad++... Oh, they're literally telling you Notepad++ on Wine. Gnome Text Editor, thank you. Notepad QQ, wasn't that. No. Genie, probably. Because Genie had fucked loads of plugins. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Genie. Apparently, if you want to use Notepad++ on Linux, then there's an exact replica of it called Notepad QQ. And I have a solid feeling that actually it probably is a very good exact replica, since Notepad++ is, uh, is an open source program. It's just written in C++ or C Sharp. One of the two. It's written in Microsoft Visual and specifically written for WinForms. And I remember reading, basically, it's too much of a pain in the ass, considering the options there are already on Linux. It is too much of a pain in the ass to make Notepad++ work on Linux. Especially since most people who do development stuff 
probably move quite quickly on from Notepad++. Notepad++ is great for people who don't do very much development stuff and maybe just want to hack a little bit of uh, whatever together. Check out Notepad QQ because there is half a chance the date on that and the way it kind of the way the art the article it was very short, but the way that it was written, tell, saying about it, I reckon it's a 50/50. It's rust because of how it, it just felt. It looked very. The weirdest thing about it is the fact it looked like Notepad++ does on Windows. It had all the Windows things. It's like that's horrible. Genie looks crap, but at least it looks crap on. Linux rather than looking crap like it's been ported over. What did I make IRC Rand in? I wrote half of IRC Rand in fucking. Um, that's the last thing I wrote in Rust, by the way. That's why I'm. That's why I'm specifically thinking. that one because I would have wanted to set up for Rust I would have wanted to set up a proper IDLE like an actual integrated environment to write it in and just press buttons so whatever I wrote that one in because the rest of the stuff around it is game engine stuff and game engine stuff is pointless because obviously I just used the thing inside of the game engine which was good at the time I was always trying to set up Vim and Emacs and Space Max and Evil Vim and Evil Max and everything under the sun to make things work like I wanted them to, but I literally could never do it. It, it isn't worth trying to make me learn how to use term because. I'm fine with using the terminal. I'm fine with using GUIs. I just cannot wrap my head around. TUIs. Terminal UIs. Right, that's a Python thing. What did I put in my git ignore? Fuck all. <laughs> Damn it. Fuck knows what I wrote it in then. And it's, oh, it's only 70 lines, so there's half a chance I just did it in fucking text. There's half a chance I did it in a text editor that doesn't even have a... What's it on it? Python. Yeah, I think I think I used Genie, but I also think it's been a very long time since I've done anything except for used just basic text editors that come with systems to write everything. I'm trying to think what the, I would have used something to write that Rust program. Unless I... There's a tiny part of me that thinks I might have actually just written it in Nano. Just bopped open Nano and said fuck it.
No, 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 it's pretty good. Yeah, maybe I just use Genie's the Genie's the only one I remember. I did use VS Code for a little bit, but stopped after I switched away from Windows. I uh, never really think I got on it on Linux. Genie I definitely used though. Outside of the Raspberry Pi. Because all of the the thing that's making me feel weird about it is the fact that all the results are Raspberry Pi, so I'm thinking, did I ever actually write anything in it outside of using it for the Raspberry Pi? But the chances are, yes, I probably did. Because I went through, especially since I went through a phase of making sure everything I made worked on the Raspberry Pi. Which wasn't particularly difficult, to be honest. Um, I am very surprised I never learned Java in that period, but probably because Java never released on the, like, Java wasn't by default installed on the Raspberry Pi. It wasn't a thing that was there. But I think Genie doesn't have any, um... Genie doesn't have any... Oh, it looks very pretty now. <laughs> They've made it look a lot better than it used to. October 2023, Genie 2.0. Very nice. That's not bad, actually, that time. 37.27, only two minutes uh, slower, pretty much, for the rain. Not bad for uh, Kenya. Right, that's it. My favourite country. Sorted.